Well, back in Japan, one step forward and two steps back at that Fukushima nuclear plant. Today comes news. One of the pools holding spent fuel rods or used nuclear material reached the boiling point, that pool, possibly releasing more radioactive steam into the air. Now, those pools are meant to cool the fuel rods, and just the opposite, apparently, seems to be happening. Uh, this is also happening as workers make some progress returning power to the reactors, but our next guest says an explosion is still a possibility. Michio Kaku is a professor of physics at City University of New York. He's also author of Physics of the Future, How Science Will Shape Human Destiny. And I guess we're getting a good taste of that now because we're seeing this is certainly affecting the way we're thinking ahead, Michio. Why do you think an explosion is still possible here at this plant? We've had two setbacks. First of all, the spent fuel pond is boiling. If we have a boil off, the zirconium cladding interacts with water and it releases an explosive amount of energy like fireworks. We're talking about Roman candles blasting off the spent fuel pond in a hydrogen gas explosion. Is that same as a, a nuclear bomb going Not on? Not a nuclear bomb, it's a chemical explosion. We've already had three of them go off. This time, maybe another one in the spent fuel pond, which contains three times more rods than in the reactor. And to make matters worse, they connected the wires to the various units. The power is in place. They turned on the switch and nothing happened. For one of the reactors. Unit two, the pumps are broken. Therefore, we have no cooling system, and we have to have these firemen. These, it's a suicide mission. They're like samurai warriors going in with hoses, keeping everything cool. This is not in the manual. Is that really doing anything? It is keeping the, the rods cool temporarily. Remember, once the firemen no longer put water in, everything boils off. At that point, levels begin to drop like they did last week, and the meltdown starts. And if they have to evacuate because of a small earthquake or a pipe break, if they evacuate and you abandon ship, then meltdowns are inevitable in three reactors. And then what? And then I say we should exercise the Chernobyl option, and that is call out the Japanese Air Force. The same way that Gorbachev called out the Red Air Force to sandbag and bury the Chernobyl accident in a wall of concrete and sand. Now, there have been critics of that idea. They have come out and said, if you do that now and everything is still so hot underneath, that it could bury the heat and the material. And I'm not a scientist. I'm doing my best here, Michio. Mm -hmm. And that causes even further uh, contamination of the area that causes an even bigger problem in the future. Uh, what do you think of that criticism? Well, if you're bleeding, the first thing you do is you stop the bleeding. Then later, you can argue about the color of the bandage. Later, you can argue about whether or not you should put more iodine on, on your wound. The main thing is to stop the bleeding. We're in a situation where we could lose maybe 25% of the whole radiation inventory in the air, like at Chernobyl. It's a small price to pay to have the option of sandbagging and burying the whole thing. Real quick, is there a time frame where we can no longer do the entombment? Or is we're that getting, always an option? Uh, we're getting very close to it. It takes several days to get the Japanese self-defense forces up to speed, to get them equipped with sand and borated water and concrete. And again, it's a fail-safe option. It's an option that we don't want to exercise. But with things touch and go, a small earthquake could tip it off in that direction. We've seen a few earthquakes already today. Michio, thank you very much. Always nice to have you.